Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It is post-match reaction show time after Liverpool have just won a game in the Premier League yet again. And uh, as is becoming custom at the moment, it was relatively plain sailing for Liverpool, which came as a little bit of a surprise to me and I think will come as a surprise to a lot of people because Sheffield United gave us one of our most difficult games earlier on in the season. That away match at their ground, the 1-0 win with the slightly scabby, I think it's fair to say, Gini Wijnaldum goal that got us all three points, was one of the more difficult games we've had this season. And if I had to pick out one in the Premier League that I think we didn't deserve to win, I'd probably put that above the, the one we actually didn't win against Manchester United because I thought Sheffield United were also absolutely fantastic fantastic and that's not to say they were rubbish today they were perfectly fine the way they set up defensively was excellent they were tight they were compact they were difficult to get through I think going forward they left a little bit to be desired but the main issue they had was they were up against the best team in the world and we can now say that without any shadow of a doubt Liverpool have got the silverware to back it up they've now got the league position to back it up as well and you've only got to look at the performances to see that this is a team that essentially at the moment looks unbeatable it just looks like there's absolutely no way past them and that's what happened when Sheffield United tried to get forward today whenever they did get bodies forward and even though they were kind of well organized and compact defensively and they got a lot of men back when necessary it's not like they were lumping it forward to a lone front man they had a plan they had ideas they had mo kind of movement that the strikers were attempting but Liverpool's defense just was not having any of it you know I thought Joe Gomez once again was absolutely fantastic he's been on such a brilliant run of form I feel like when him and Van Dijk when they play together and they play together consistently Consistently, they play their absolute best football by a country mile. Virgil van Dijk is obviously brilliant and will look brilliant alongside pretty much anyone. And Joe Gomez is a solid player who's still finding his feet a little bit, but the two of them just seem to get the best out of each other. There were times when Joe Gomez, he did this thing which previously it's looked like he's getting caught out, where a ball comes over the top and he gets ahead on it, but not enough. And all he does is kind of divert it wide and the striker still ends up getting on the end of it, but just in a slightly less advantageous position. And if uh, Joe Gomez was a little bit slower, if he was, and I'm not trying to knock the guy, but if he was a Dejan Lovren type figure, that would be a serious issue because the opposition would be in behind him. But because it's Joe Gomez, because he's got the recovery speed, and because I think he's almost doing that kind of little move of heading the ball off to the side deliberately, it ends up being absolutely no problem for the Liverpool defence whatsoever. He heads the ball off to the side, the attacker bends their run, chases it, picks up the ball, and by the time he's done all that, Joe Gomez has tracked back, slowed him down, the attackers have to think, well, which way am I going to go now? By that point, Virgil van Dijk's back, Trent Alexander-Arnold's back, Andrew Robertson's back as well. It's just there are so many little things that this Liverpool defence does which makes them absolutely impossible to get past. And when you do get past Joe Gomez and Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson and that incredibly fantastic and hard-working midfield, you get past all of them... Virgil van Dijk pops up and does what he did today where he actually has to make a slide tackle. It's something we don't see him do really at all in a Liverpool shirt. He's very rarely put into that situation by himself or his teammates. But when he is, he's just so perfect in terms of the execution is flawless. There's just no way to get around him. He gets all the ball, barely any other man as well. So there's no debate over whether it's a foul or not. And bearing in mind, there are three players bearing down on him there. If he doesn't make that interception, it's almost a certain goal by just law of averages, by the sheer amount of players that Sheffield United are committing to the attack. But because Van Dijk wins the ball back, Liverpool end up having an opportunity to counter, which, you know, to be able to drag that out of the situation we were in when Sheffield were trying to counter back on us is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, this defence just seems unbeatable. And then you move further forward, you've got the midfield. Jordan Henderson, he got the, the Man of the Match award from BT Sports. Steve McManaman gave it to him today. I'm going to agree with him there. I thought Henderson was sublime. His reading of the game from that slightly deeper position and the proactive way in which he just lurches forward at times. Whenever he can see a loose ball... And it's what makes Liverpool's pressing so good because it's not mindless. It's not just about chasing the ball whenever you feel like it. It's about waiting for the moment, you know, springing the trap. And whenever he sees a pass coming to a Sheffield player that looks like it's going to go a bit loose, that looks like it's not going to quite get to him in time, Jordan Henderson is immediately on the move, always behind them as well. He's like this silent assassin that must just suddenly appear over your shoulder and nick the ball. And before you even know it, Liverpool are on the counter-attack and he's 10 yards in front of you. And you're just like thinking, well, what the hell am I even supposed to do? surrounded by that baying Anfield crowd thinking well, that it must be so difficult to play against this Liverpool team I just I don't think we've quite got our heads around 
just how much players can't be bothered to play against us anymore. Just how much they must look at that game at Anfield. A game that a few seasons ago was thought of as, you know, a game where, okay, Anfield, it's a huge stadium, but that's a massive scalp that you can get because Liverpool have weaknesses. They don't have weaknesses anymore, really, at all. And they exploit all of yours to maximum effect. And Henderson was central to that today because it was so important to get attacks going quickly because of how organised Sheffield United were. It was absolutely vital that when we won the ball back, we won it in dangerous areas and we moved the ball quickly. And Henderson did that every single time. The way he just charged with it and laid off passes. That cross, the low cross that he plays in for the most Salah chance in the first half inside about the first 15 minutes that Salah hits. And it's a really, really good save from Dean Henderson. That is a sublime pick out from Jordan Henderson. It's the kind of thing that people are accusing him of being flat out incapable of a few seasons ago. And now he picks that ball out pretty much every single game. And I think that's down to A, the fact that his positioning has slightly changed. It was interesting that he essentially started in that number six role today. Of course, Fabinho's absence necessitates that he continues to do that. But he wasn't as restricted as he maybe has been in the past. And some of that was due to the fact that Sheffield played deep and the fact that it's at home at Anfield as well. But I think it's also the fact that maybe we switched around with Milner coming in for Cater and with the trusted Genie Van Aldem on the other side. It meant that Henderson could come forward a little bit more and it lended this fantastic fluidity to our midfield as we got forward that there was always an option on from one of those midfield three to cause Sheffield United problems. So Jordan Henderson, absolutely fantastic. Really, really coming to his own in his Liverpool career at the moment. I think it's fair to say that he is Liverpool's player of the last decade and who knows what he may achieve in this next one. So Jordan Henderson, fantastic. Van Alden just doing his usual job brilliantly. James Milner, considering he came into the side very, very late on, so probably didn't have the right warm-up. They sort of they have different ones for the subs and the starting eleven, don't they? The subs normally stay out for a bit longer. So he probably wasn't perfectly ready for that game and that kind of showed because he wasn't at the same level as the others but he didn't really put a foot wrong at any point in the game and that is you know commendable in itself in a Premier League match especially at this very very difficult stage of the season so the midfield was just brilliant the attack as well sublime I think Roberto Firmino slightly off it I think it's fair to say I think just wasn't quick enough. I don't know whether maybe because the game was on the second, he thought maybe he could be sneaky and nip out on New Year's Eve and have a nice time. You know, it's entirely possible. We all know Roberto Firmino loves a little bit of a party. If you don't know that, check out the guy's Instagram. He's always out on the ale, always having a lovely time. Normally he delivers in a Liverpool shirt as well. Today, he kind of didn't. He was just a little bit slower than the other attackers. He was picking out balls too late and because of how quickly Sheffield United closed down, you had to pick the ball out early. Liverpool's goals came from very, very quick passes one touch passes finding the run picking it out and the player just scoring with like their first or second touch that's how we needed to be playing today most players were on that wavelength but it just felt like Roberto Firmino was ever so slightly off it I'm not going to criticize him too much because at the end of the day sometimes the attackers just have games where they aren't as good as the other members of the front three which is understandable because one of the members of the front three is always playing what seems the game of their life uh, but you know he just seemed ever so slightly off it today and I think the rest will do him good over the next couple of games you probably won't play in the derby and hopefully he comes back stronger than ever for that game against Spurs but he just didn't quite find the pace in the same way that Mane and Salah did today so speaking of Mane and Salah Salah of course gets the goal early on absolutely brilliantly taken which is great of course had a slight duck by his standards I guess in terms of goal scoring hadn't scored a goal in uh, four games after scoring four in his previous three so it's nice to see him back on the score sheet that is again the fantastic thing about our front three whenever one of them drops out another one comes back in it was actually for me for the last few games so maybe it's no surprise that he, he wasn't quite firing today he may have burned himself out in the games beforehand but Salah his movement was excellent the way that he was just te he was tearing that Sheffield United defence apart without even receiving the ball the way he just dragged them this way and that getting in behind going out wide doing stuff on the ball doing stuff off the ball the goal was brilliantly taken as well and then the pass for Sadio Mane for the second is just brilliant you know it's it's something that's so good about this Liverpool team is they spot passes and they spot runs that we as fans just don't see and we've got the perfect view we can see the whole pitch and we don't always see these options or we don't think those options are on it's kind of the opposite of, cri of a criticism that was leveled at Manchester United yesterday which was that they always play the pass that the fans can see and the fans have already noticed and picked out and screamed pick him out and by the time they actually play the pass it's become so obvious that the opposition cuts it out with relative ease Liverpool are the complete opposite of that they are in no way stagnant they find passes that you didn't even think were possible and that's what happens with that one too Mane lays it off with a brilliant little flick as well and then Salah just holds it up he is incredibly strong with the way he holds it 
draws the whole defence, and then it's wonderful technique to just slip the ball back into Sadio Mane. A little bit unlucky for the goalkeeper, but it's testament to Sadio Mane's persistence that he follows up that ball, he makes it 2-0, and from that point in, it just felt like game over. You know, Sheffield United, they it, at 1-0, it always, you kind of thought, well, our defence is absolutely fantastic, but there's always the chance that one little thing goes wrong. There's a slip here, or just in a moment of individual brilliance from a Sheffield United player there, or they just press very well, their tactics work out, and they get a goal out of it, and that could have led to a one-all draw. But once it went up to 2-0, I thought there's no way that can happen twice. Lightning won't strike twice. It certainly won't strike against this Liverpool team. They are just so, so strong defensively. And when you get past all of that, Alisson Becker pops up with a very, very big save as well. The one from Ollie McBurney where he tries to squeeze the ball over the line and, and Alisson just holds the ball, keeps it over the right side of the line. And from that point on, it's like, well, if they're not going to score chances like that, they've got no way of getting anything out of this game. It's a bit unfortunate that maybe we didn't get to rest a few players a little bit more. I would have made be like to have seen Mane, Salah or Firmino just come on a little bit earlier with the intention of playing them for a little bit in the derby. I don't think any of them are going to start. I'm a little bit nervous about that derby now because it does look like we've gone full strength for this one and then we will play. The, I, I say the kids like that with this situation we've got in the squad at the moment. It is literally going to be the kids in some areas. You know, Harvey Elliott is going to be one of our star players in that game for sure. And of course, Minamino as well, who unfortunately couldn't play today. But the fact alone that we've got Minamino to come into this attack is absolutely fantastic. That we've got an extra player who can bring an extra dimension as well. It's not like he's just a backup for Mane or Salah or Firmino. He's a new talent that will offer something different that will make lives even more hellish for Premier League defenders. We've got all that to come and it's not like we really need to improve but we're probably going to. That's just the nature of this Liverpool side at the moment. So yeah, in the meantime, let's all enjoy this 2-0 win. Let's not worry too much about that Everton game at the weekend. We can think about that much more later on. For now, let's be happy with the ridiculously good position Liverpool are in. Now 13 points clear of Leicester in second place, and I believe 14 points clear of Manchester City in third place. And that is still with that game in hand against West Ham to come later on in the month. So Liverpool are sitting pretty. If everything's absolutely fantastic at the moment, go off and enjoy your night. That is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, as always, you know what to do. Hit the like button down there. Hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days. Don't forget to follow at LSU Focus TV on Twitter. And I'll be back soon with the pre-match content for that cup game against Everton. Until then, bye for now.